Good morning and welcome. Uh, Leslie Green Bowman, the president of the Thomas Jefferson Foundation, regrets that she cannot be with us today and, ask me, and, and has asked me to extend her official enthusiastic and warm greetings to each of you. We are very, very happy to see you for Telling the History of Slavery, Scholarship, Museum Interpretation, and the Public. I am Susan Stein, Senior Curator and Vice President of Museum Programs and the Project Director of Mulberry Row and the Landscape of Slavery at Jefferson's Monticello. And yes, there will be a quiz later <laughs> <laughs> about all, all of that. Uh, this on-site, multi-platform, online project is supported in part by the National Endowment for the Humanities and served as the impetus for this conference. Our modest, to, our modest request to NEH several years ago um, for a few scholars to discuss the Mulberry Row Project and the interpretation of slavery at historic sites blossomed into this comprehensive two-day awesome program with 20 panelists and 100 participants. So thank you all. <laughs> um, now, um, planned with the participation of Morven at the University of Virginia and with the support of Stuart Gamage, its head, the Thomas Jefferson Foundation, with its long-standing interest in this subject, is pleased to sponsor the conference. The foundation, in case you haven't been here before, owns and operates Monticello, and it has studied slavery at Monticello through historical and archaeological research for over 50 years and has actively interpreted slavery to the public at Monticello for the last 25 years. The excellent program about to unfold was conceived by two Monticello staff members, assistant curator Justin Serafin and curator Elizabeth Chu, and then Morvin's director of research, Laura Voison George and Professor John Coombs, right here, of Hampton Sydney College. And these four people formed a veritable powerhouse of talent in central Virginia. And Justin, now with Preservation Virginia, Laura and John are here today. Justin and Laura, will you st wave? <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, um, we regret that Elizabeth Chu's new duties at Rinalda House in North Carolina prevented her from being with us today. Laura let us know that she and John Coombs were planning a similar conference for Morven, just as Justin and Elizabeth were putting together Monticello's program. We quickly realized the advantage of merging our efforts and the rest is history, telling the history of slavery. Thank you, Justin, Elizabeth, and Laura, and John, for assembling this amazing roster of luminaries in our field. Today and tomorrow, telling the history of slavery will explore recent advances in slavery re research and how these advances are influencing and might influence public understanding of slavery. We will explore how new and established research tools, more data-driven studies, access to online resources, and digital animations are changing research, scholarship, and the means of information and ideas related to enslaved people, slavery, the slave trade, and the operations of slave-based plantations. Each of the four interdisciplinary panels will consider the influence of current scholarship and how it affects what we understand, what we present, and how we present it in museums and in the media, even documentary filmmaking, for example. How might these enhanced resources and analytical tools affect our scholarship interactive interpretation programs and influence the reconstruction of lost historic sites. 
what opportunities are presented to us, and what do our various audiences and constituents expect in a digital age? How can we combine new enhanced resources with scholarly approaches, documentary records, artifacts, historic sites to expand and deepen public understanding of slavery? We have many individuals and three organizations to thank. First, the Financial Angels, the National Endowment for the Humanities, represented by Jeff Hardwick, who is a public programs officer. And Jeff is here today. Jeff, will you stand? Thank you. There's also the uh, support received from the Fritz and Claudine Kundrin Foundation and the Thomas Jefferson Foundation and its Robert H. Smith International Center for Jefferson Studies, headed by our colleague Andrew O'Shaughnessy. Before going any farther, um, we all want to acknowledge the pioneering research and publications of Cinder Stanton, who is here today, Shannon Senior Historian Emerita, and thank her for her insight and encouragement of all facets of study related to the Monticello Plantation and its people. Thank you. Um, um, the unflappable Mary Scott Fleming handled a dizzying array of details and deserves credit for her organization of the conference and her control of the weather this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Um, there are many important people behind the scenes. Uh, Paul Fritz in information technology and Patrick Butler in events. Um, you can thank Patrick for your breakfast and your lunch and the receptions. There are too many Monticello staff to recognize individually, but know that dozens of us, especially in Fraser Nyman's archaeology department and Gary Sandling's education and visitor programs department, collaborated with the conference planners. Thank you, everyone, for what you have contributed. Now, I'm nearly at the end. There are a few housekeeping notes. Turn your cell phones off, please. Um, the restrooms are located immediately next to the theater and also below the down, downstairs, below the place where you registered this morning. The museum shop is open until 5.30 and will offer a 20% discount to everyone here. So just tell, tell people that you're with the conference before they ring up the sale. And there are four outstanding exhibitions to see in the nearby Smith Gallery. All three discuss slavery. And thank you all for coming to discuss your work and to share your ideas. A final, just one final note, the success of this conference depends on you and your participation. We're counting on you to contribute to the dialogue. Thank you.